Did you know you can copy-paste text directly from still images and videos on your Mac? I can take a video in QuickTime Player, for example, pause it, copy text from any element in the video, and paste it to a text document. Same thing works on photos. Oh, and if you want to quickly make text bigger, hit Command and the plus key. Most people send their links like this. But with a little help from Command plus K, you can avoid the messy URLs and send clean links with a description instead. Highlight any part of your text, hit Command plus K on your keyboard, and insert the link there. Makes your messages look more professional. And that spotlight search, you're not using it enough. Quick math, unit conversions, checking sports scores, or tracking flights, you can do it all in the spotlight search window. I have a full video for this, so if you want to learn more, go check that out. If you click and drag your files like this, you can select multiple files without ever touching your keyboard. I do this all the time when juggling tons of files at work. If you click and drag the file name itself, it's not going to work. Click that empty space next to the files and you'll have a smooth selection of multiple files at once. But that's not really what I was about to show. I wanted to show how to quickly batch rename a bunch of files. Highlight your files, right click and choose rename. You can either replace text, which allows you to replace a part of the original name with something else. Or you can either add text either before or after the existing name. Or you can format your files to have a name and a number counter or a date. I do this a lot when working with a large batch of still images or videos, but obviously you can do it to any type of file. And if you want to compress your files into a zip file for easy sharing, right-click your files and choose Compress. Boom, there's your zip file. My favorite way of driving myself crazy with a Mac is how copy-pasting text always brings over the formatting. No, Tim, I don't want your crazy big weird fonts. I want regular text. Shift, Command, Option plus V will paste your text without ruining your font. You're welcome. Speaking of text, I'm a big fan of copy-pasting text by simply clicking and dragging it. There's something deeply satisfying about moving text from one place to another without using your keyboard. It just feels more crafty that way, almost like I'm physically moving it. If you're doing it for the first time, it might take a little bit of practice. The trick is to click and hold the text for a second before you start moving it. Give it a try. You'll be surprised how oddly satisfying something as simple as this can be. For me, a big part of staying efficient means two things. First of all, my Mac has to perform flawlessly day in and day out, meaning no downtime because of technical issues. I have deadlines, clients, and I don't have time for that. And secondly, because I don't have time to tinker and troubleshoot every little thing, I prefer to streamline my processes and use tools that can save me time. That's why I'm excited to partner with Clean My Mac for this video. It helps you keep your Mac running smoothly with a single click. It's a really fun tool that allows you to easily declutter your Mac and remove any unnecessary junk. My favorite part of this app is the new Space Lens feature that visualizes what's taking up space on your system. After scanning my user account, I get a visual representation of what's taking up space. And on the left, I have a traditional file browser that allows me to select and delete the folders I don't want to keep. These Adobe Cache files, for example, are hidden by default. So unless you know how to manually reveal hidden files in Finder, you'll never find them. I could dig into my library folder, manually locate and delete them, but honestly, seeing this visual guide here and using the file browser makes it a hundred times easier. And speaking of a hundred, SpaceLens just freed up about a hundred gigabytes on my Mac with just a few clicks. Not bad, huh? So if you're busy, don't want to tinker with silly little issues and want to optimize your Mac for smooth performance, check out Clean My Mac. If you want to be productive, get a display and get the best one you can afford. Seriously, don't cheap out. Get one that's big, high resolution, and easy on the eyes. This might be one of the biggest, if not the biggest factors when it comes to productivity. I don't care how comfortable you're working on a laptop or some small screen. Once you have close to 30 inches of screen real estate at a 5K resolution, it'll change the way you work. Gear snobs will say Apple's studio display is outdated and overpriced. And while they have a point, I'll also say that I've never met anyone who purchased the studio display and didn't love it. I love mine. It's been such a good investment that if I had to choose again, I'd get the same display in a heartbeat. If you don't want to dish out that much money for a screen, get something similar. Anything except working on that laptop screen. You'll thank me later. 
If there's an app you always have running on your Mac, do yourself a favor and set those apps to launch automatically every time you turn on your computer. Go to System Settings, General, Login Items, and there you can pick any apps to launch automatically every time your Mac starts up. This is also useful if you currently have apps auto-launching during startup, but you want to stop that from happening. Just select the app and hit that minus button, and they won't be launching automatically any longer. Or what about this? You have files that always open in the wrong application. Um, for example, this EXR image file here, if I double-click it, it always tries to open in Preview, even though Preview doesn't support this file format. I could manually open it with another application, but I don't want to do this every single time. So into the info window we go, and from there we'll find the drop-down for which application is used to open this file. This is only for this particular file, but if I want to change it for all files in this format, I'll click Change All. Bada bim, bada boom. Now when I double-click the file, it always opens in my preferred application. If you're bilingual or just frequently need to type foreign characters, you can set up multiple languages for your keyboard and use a keyboard shortcut to change your keyboard layout. To add a new language, you'll go to Settings, Keyboard, and Input Sources. There you'll see how your physical keyboard will type different characters, depending on which input source you're using. To quickly swap between languages, you can set a shortcut under Keyboard Settings, Keyboard Shortcuts, and Input Sources. I believe the default shortcut is Control and Space, but you can change that to whatever you'd like. Another fairly important efficiency trick is to learn to fully utilize your trackpad or mouse gestures. Mouse and trackpad gestures on macOS allow you to swipe between pages, swipe between full-screen apps, open Mission Control or Launchpad, or even Notification Center, use the Smart Zoom feature, rotate images, or swipe between pages. When my email inbox is full, I just swipe away and all the unnecessary emails get archived. It really boosts your efficiency to learn some gestures and put them to use. If you have an Apple Watch, go to System Settings and Login Password on your Mac, and you can set up your watch to automatically unlock your Mac. No more passwords or Touch ID. This one is actually super convenient. Highly recommend it. If you ever need to combine two videos into one, you can do that in QuickTime Player. Just open up one video and then drag another on the playhead on the bottom. Boom, your videos are now together. Once you're done, you'll just export this new video and that's it. QuickTime Player is super powerful and does a lot of things most people don't know about. I have a full video listing all the hidden features, so if you want to learn more, check the link in the description. I hope you're all using color tags in Finder, but if you're not, bad news. You've been missing out. For those that are sleeping on this awesome little feature, it's nothing fancy. Just adds a little color tag on your files. But it's pretty useful when you're trying to highlight the keepers from a large batch of photos or want to highlight a document that needs your attention later. Or whatever's important, good or bad, this is a quick way to mark those files without having to mess with the actual file name or location of those files. And of course, once you have them tagged, you can set Finder to sort your files based on labels, which will throw all tagged files on top of the list. You ever need help finding something? Yeah, me too. You know that little help menu that every single app on your Mac has? It's actually incredibly useful, and I'm Pretty sure most people aren't using it enough. Say I'm in Photoshop and I want to use the camera raw filter, but I can't exactly remember where that is. Pop open the help search, type in camera raw, and boom, there's my answer. Hit enter and it takes me directly there. Or maybe I want some blur but don't know how to get to those. Or I want to export my image as a PNG file. Anything that's available in the menus of your apps, you can find it through this search window. And remember, it's not just for apps like Photoshop. This works for every single application on your Mac. If you need an easy way to type in foreign characters on your Mac, simply press and hold a letter on your keyboard, and all the foreign variations will become available. If you need a capitalized letter, do the same thing while holding down the Shift key. And speaking of special characters, hitting Command, Control, and the spacebar will bring out the emojis. Easy access to all your favorite emojis, right within any application that allows you to type. And of course, we can't speak about productivity without talking about hot corners. If you don't have these set up yet, go to Settings, Desktop, and Dock, and scroll down to Hot Corners. This allows you to trigger different functions by poking a corner of your screen with the cursor. 
I use it a lot for mission control and window switching, but you can also use it to put your display to sleep, start your screensaver, make a note, or lock your Mac. It has been one of my favorite features since OS X Tiger, and I hope it never goes away. I'd love to see Apple add more custom functions to these corners, though. Play and pause your music, bring a specific app to the front, switch between dark mode and light mode, activate do not disturb, endless possibilities. Got another finder tip for you. If you have a folder that you frequently access on a daily basis, a good way to save time is to add it to your finder sidebar as a shortcut. Now you can access the folder with a single click, no matter how deep the folder is buried on your hard drive. You can also have a shortcut for any folder in your dock. Drag and drop it in and you can access and quickly preview the contents right in the dock. There's also a few different ways to display the contents of your folder, or you can let your Mac automatically choose the style depending how many files your folder has. One trick most people don't know about is that you can convert videos right within Finder without using any additional applications. Right-click a video, choose Encode Selected Video Files, and off we go. It doesn't give a ton of options for the settings, but it has the most common video formats as presets, as well as a few different resolutions to choose from. For formats like HEVC, it also has the option to preserve an alpha channel, aka transparency in your video. You can also use this to extract audio and save a new file with the audio only. Once you choose your format, you'll see a little gear icon spinning in your menu bar. That's your Mac telling you it's working on it, but this part is easy to miss. Once the conversion is complete, you'll see the new file next to the original video. Activity Monitor is a sure way to tell if someone's a Mac power user. It gives you real-time data on everything that's happening on your Mac, and it can help pinpoint any issues when technical difficulties get in the way of your productivity. It shows you how much CPU, memory, energy, disk access, and internet bandwidth each application is using, and it also tells you if an app stops responding. Great tool to monitor your processes, see if your apps are taking full advantage of your system, and force quit apps that might have gotten stuck. This one is obvious to many of you, but it's so convenient it needs to be highlighted for the three people that aren't using it yet. Hold down the command key and then repeatedly press the tab key. Switching between applications doesn't get easier and faster than this. If this isn't burned into your muscle memory already, it's time to make that happen. Anyone who uses a Mac to work on video files should also have the Apple Pro video formats downloaded. If you have Final Cut Pro installed, you already have this, but even if you're not using Final Cut, this is a free codec package that can be downloaded on Apple's website. It adds support to a variety of codecs and allows you to preview some file types directly in Finder that otherwise wouldn't work. You can't quit Finder on a Mac, but if anything in your Finder becomes unresponsive, you can hold down the Option key, right-click Finder in your dock, and relaunch it. Finder itself is pretty robust, but I sometimes run into issues where a hard drive fails to eject, or my Finder window gets stuck when a network drive fails to connect. You can use the same trick for any app, but instead of relaunching, it will force quit the app. If you need to resize a still image, for example make a photo smaller, you can quickly do that in preview. The beauty of macOS is that you can get most things done with the native applications alone, so there's no need for third-party apps for stuff like this. Open up the photo in preview, open the Adjust Size tool, and type in the dimensions you want. You'll see the current file size and the estimated file size for your resized photo. Last but not least, I want to highlight the Reader feature in Safari, which helps you eliminate ads and all the distracting junk on a web page, and focus on the important. On any article, you can activate the Reader mode on the left side of the address bar, and it'll simplify any page into a very Apple-looking style with only the main content displayed on a clean page. What I love about this is that you can also adjust the visual look to your liking by changing the background color, font style, and size, giving you some flexibility to make any page easy to read and easy on the eyes. Another cool feature you can access from the same menu is the ability to hide distracting items. This allows you to click elements on any page and make them disappear, cleaning up the page for you. It's not an ad blocker, and elements like ads that refresh frequently will eventually come back, but it's a nice way to make your browsing experience nicer if you spend a lot of time on a certain page. And those are all the efficiency tricks I could think of. Thanks for watching. Tell me your favorite productivity tricks in the comments, and I hope to see you all in the next video.